So let me wrap up. Uh, here are the impossible machines that I described. And there was this hierarchy. So if you can have a classical translation, you can build a cloner out of that. Uh, and if you have that, you have universal joint measurement. And if you have that, you can make a correlation telephone. That was the most complicated conclusion here. And that is simply a causality violation. And because we don't want that in our theory, and quantum mechanics actually doesn't have it in the theory, uh, all these guys are impossible. That was the basic, the basic idea. Now, one, one point here, you could ask why was this, this hierarchy not seen in the classical world? Well, there's one point where we need physical input, and that is this. So we need that actually the, the correlations that are seen in the SPA experiment, for example, that, uh, that they are as they are. They violate Bell inequalities. So that, that's something that, you, that there's an empirical input to this. Right? But that's a crucial point, of course. Now, OK, so this hierarchy is nice, but it doesn't exhaust the, the family of impossible machines of quantum mechanics. So very briefly, let me uh, say a few other things that are impossible. So let me just machines or tasks or whatever. So one that we already saw in this context, I would call the mixed state ensemble. So you can make unpolarized light by combining vertically and horizontally polarized light, or you could do it at 45 degrees. Right? So with 50-50 weights, you bring these two kinds of lights into one channel. And then it's a statement of quantum mechanics that all you know, or all you can get from statistical experiments out of, out of this is contained in the density operator. That is always the same thing. So this is in the so in our picture we have these conditional preparations and they intersect in one point. So this is the unpolarized light. And so this is an irreversible process. You cannot, so if you just know what, what Bob sees, he cannot say whether it was made like this or it was made like that. And this is exa exactly what we're using here. So it's not, not a new thing, it's just maybe. A point of view that is useful to have that really the density operator in quantum mechanics contains everything that you can extract by statistical me uh, measurements and you cannot unscramble that. Right? So if this is the scrambling process but you cannot unscramble it. So another thing that is impossible in quantum mechanics is um, uh, information gain about the system without the strength. So any kind of interaction, if you want to extract any information from a quantum state or from a quantum system, you must introduce some disturbance. You're always changing the state. And that's, that's a very general principle, extremely useful to know, um, but it actually you really need the structure of quantum mechanics here. It's not something that would follow out of this kind of argument just out of empirical facts, but here you, the structure of quantum mechanics will tell you that. Also a very important principle. And you can state it as the impossibility of a machine. So from all this, you might get the impression that quantum mechanics is like a poor theory that all kinds of things that you would want it to know wanted to do maybe uh, from a classical point of view you're, not, you're no longer allowed to do so it's what what it sounds like a very negative statement i don't want to leave you with that because there are actually things that that you can do uh, that are quite amazing and that use the quantum structure and i'll just give you one example so actually this is about the combination of two possible machines i drew them for you so the correlation telephone is this idea of sending something just on correlations. The other thing is the classical translator. And we've seen at some length that this is impossible. So what do you get when you cross a correlation telephone with a classical translator? What you get is actually called teleportation. 
and who is our dog. So you want to do basically the task of the, the, this classical translator. Right? So you want to send um, a quantum signal on a, on a classical channel. Now, that alone is impossible, right? That's, that was this part. So, but we want to combine this now with a source that produces entangled particles. That by itself is the other impossible machine. But together, if you make these things just right, you get a perfect transmission channel. So, two impossible machines combined give uh, a perfectly working one. And this is actually one of the basic, um, basic techniques that you use in, in handling of quantum information. Right? So you can, rather than sending quantum information on a, on a on, let's say on a fiber, you can instead distribute entanglement and then use a classical fiber. Right? So, so this is an important possibility. So this miraculous machine was invented in 1993 by a group of people involving Charlie Bennett, Gil Brassard, Crepeau, Asher Paris, Richard Joza, and Bill, Wood and Bill Wooters. Right? So that was a bit, a bit of a surprise. Right? There's no cloning, I think, if you have asked people in the like 10 years earlier, is that possible or not? They would have probably come up with the answer very quickly that you cannot do this. Um, but this was a real surprise. Nobody had thought of that. And, uh, okay, so it has become a very important process. So thank you. <laughs>